might have been asking yourself, what are we doing in your garage? Well, I got a diesel heater. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I just picked up some diesel as you saw. I got a bunch of parts here, which I'm going to show you in the video. I'm going to do five different mods to the diesel heater. Um, I'm going to show you all the parts that I got for it. And I'm also going to link all these parts in the description. Alright, so this is my Vever. I believe it's Vever or Vevor diesel heater. Basically, you can spend $1,200 or $1,400 on a legit, I believe it's made in Germany, uh, diesel heater. Um, but just from watching other YouTube videos, I learned that the patent expired. And now China reproduces these for super cheap. I paid $118 for this one straight from their website. Uh, it was 35% off. Um, you can also buy them on Amazon, but I found just buying direct was the cheapest. So now I'm going to go through all the different parts that I got for this diesel heater. And then we'll get into the five different mods to make these diesel heaters just a little bit better. Alright, so you might be asking yourself, what the heck is all this stuff? Well, let's see, we'll start with this. So the diesel heater came with these cables. This heater is nice because it has these little twistable, uh, I'm not a wire guy so I don't know the terms, but it has these little uh, terminals and um, you know, there's no wiring involved. But this doesn't have a 12 volt plug and I'm going to be using this diesel heater hooked up to my Blue Eddy. Um, so I did buy this on Amazon um, and that is in the description box. That should do it. Just a little bit of diesel. You know what, I'm going to take this red cover off so I can kind of see what's going on. We'll set that up there. All right. Now their gas tanks aren't strapped down to anything. It's not really a problem because it's enclosed with that red little case. But I'm probably going to get some zip ties and just zip tie it down so there's no movement at all. So let's get this uh, hooked up and plugged into some power. This is like the air filter, I guess, but this black piece just goes right into this other black piece and I'm going to tighten this down. It'll install on the right side. Let's see if the screen is laying down on your left side, then this is the air intake and this is going to be your exhaust exit. Alright, so I'm going to run my intake through this hole here. We're gonna snug that down now. All right, so this is all tightened down. All right, so I just wanna show you guys, I just zip tied the intake up right here. And then I actually got the, the heater up on these four by fours just because I didn't want any issues with the heater. All right, so I just held down the power button and the fan it's now blowing air. These things take a minute or two to warm up. So they slowly pull fuel through the lines and eventually it hits the pump. And then uh, I actually feel air coming out the exhaust already. Well, only a minute later and I can hear the fuel pump already. These things are notorious for making clicking sounds already speeding up so, so these screens are supposed to be really hard to work because I haven't looked at the owner's menu but they're really confusing so you have to go on YouTube and learn how to use them but uh, I just held down the power button 
Other people are saying you have to hold down the sun button and the up button, but I don't know. I'm just trying to figure it out, I guess. All right, so it's only been about five minutes and my garage is already getting hot. I think it's eight o'clock in the morning and it's already 80 degrees, but this thing is blowing really warm air. I can't keep my hand there for more than a couple seconds. So yeah, this thing's pretty rad. All right, so the heater's cooled down, it's shut off. To shut it off, you just hold down the power button. I did put a zip tie around the fuel tank because no, there was nothing holding it in. So it's a little more secure. Uh, the first mod that I'm gonna do is instead of using this piece that came with it, it's a little more pliable. I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna use this three inch galvanized steel elbow. Uh, I think it's gonna go this way. Yeah, so that's going to be the mod number one. I think I'm using this because I just think it's going to provide a better upward flow because I'm going to be going straight up into the tent. Mod number two, it comes with these regular hose clamps. I'm doing twisted clamps. So you can see I already have it on here. It's just going to be easier to pack away and set up. You don't have to pull out a screwdriver or a wrench. Um, you could just twist it on, twist it off. See, that's really snug. All right, so I did buy this hosing. So the heater comes with this piece. I just hose clamped it on and let's attach it. All right, so you can see here, I got the twisted clamps on both sides. This is actually a 16 foot hose, and this is gonna run up to the tent. All right, so mod number three, we are gonna add a fuel filter. You can see there's a pump here. It comes out of the back, loops around, comes underneath, and goes straight into the fuel pump. There's no filter. So we are gonna add one of these little filters. It's just a uh, lawnmower filter, um, and it'll work just fine. I got these on Amazon and then I also got some quarter inch fuel hose on Amazon as well. Let's get it installed. Alright, so we got the fuel filter installed. I ended up only using maybe about an inch of the uh, fuel line that I bought. Uh, but you can see it now has a fuel filter. So the hose comes out of the tank and then goes directly into the fuel filter. I ended up using this plastic line because it was more flexible. The rubber hose didn't really want to fit in here. So then it loops around and then comes back around. Goes into the pump. Looks pretty clean. So I'm gonna put the zip ties back on here, let it cool down, and then uh, yeah, we'll do the uh, mod four and five. All right, so mod number four is gonna be this tire step. I got this idea from another guy on YouTube uh, yeah you just use this tire step to put the heater on and it's pretty awesome it keeps the heater off the ground which is awesome if it's raining or snowing and yeah so I kind of got it where I want I'm just gonna drill four holes and then put some bolts through it and then I'm gonna use a hole saw to make a hole in the middle here for the exhaust to come out of Quick spray paint just to prevent it from rusting.
my cut was good. It's pretty, pretty centered. It'll do. So you can see the exhaust is going to come out the bottom here. I got all the bolts in. They're not tightened down yet because there's still one more thing we're going to do. Um, I did add, because my tire's so wide, this step won't sit level. I'm sure it doesn't matter much, but I, uh, I wanted to get the, uh, the heater semi-level. And it's almost there. Uh, it's close enough. Uh, but what I did, I just stacked some washers on this side to get this side higher. All right, moving on to mod number five. All right, so the heater comes with this exhaust hose, if you want to call it. And um, what I'm going to do is cut it with the hole saw. And I'm going to make it a quick release exhaust so I got this 25 millimeter coupler also on Amazon and I'm going to use this to make it a quick release that way it'll pack away a lot easier um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that and then also I'm going to add this black exhaust wrap and basically that's gonna co cover the, the outside of the exhaust and just make it less likely to start a fire if there's any dry brush and it looks good so that's important too all right let's get started all right so here's the cut piece I'm just gonna file down I'm gonna install this side onto the heater and then I'm gonna use this Permatex muffler putty everything that I use for the whole video the links will be in the description all right so let's get this thing uh, installed on the heater So I just want to show you really quick, I did, this is the one that I cut. Now, this kind of end doesn't want to fit onto here. So I did purchase another exhaust pipe, which is cool because it'll go on here and then it'll give me enough length. Since my, my heater is sucking in air from this side, I'm going to plug it in here and then I'm going to angle the exhaust out the other side. All right, so I gotta say, wrapping this exhaust looks pretty sweet. This one turned out really good. See that 25 millimeter piece just gives me the ability to slide it on in there. It does hold. The exhaust is gonna shoot out that way. I'm gonna fire it up one last time, and the next video you see of this thing, it'll be out on the trail somewhere. I got the, the hose mounted to the other side of the tent kind of resembling if the tent were open it's plugged into the blue eddy and i have the hose coming out this side here so this will be obviously in the tent when we're out camping and one more thing i wanted to show you i didn't talk about these i did buy these extra hose clamps from amazon as well and then this is what I wanted to show you. Check out how much power it's drawing. 8 to 12 watts, which is nothing. And then these heaters, just from watching another video about them, they can run for 12 hours on a half a gallon of diesel. So, yeah, stay tuned. Winter is far away, about four or five months. And we're going to be using this and hopefully doing some snow camping. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.